Hello there, I am your host, Scott Fry, and welcome to another magnificent Monday here on MouthMock.com. Uh, we took a look at our teeth from last week, and there's some really noticeable change uh, between the teeth that were in the acidic drinks that we had set up, the, uh, the Gatorade, the Kombucha, the Diet Coke, uh, and the, the tooth that was in just the plain Fuji water. Now, I know the video quality is not superb. Um, I reviewed the video from last week and you couldn't get a real good look uh, at what the teeth uh, were looking like before they went into solution, but um, I'm posting some pictures down below uh, so that way you get some close-ups of exactly how the teeth are responding to each one of the solutions. You can check those out. Um, we have a really great show today and we've got our new whiteboard here. We're going to be talking about the seven keys to terrific teeth. Um, I don't want to get you, you know, kind of swamped all at once, so we're just going to actually focus on the first on our list, which is enamel structure. We're going to get to the enamel pellicle, which is the uh, protein skin on your teeth, saliva, habits, cleaning, diet, and lastly, and obviously, bacteria. We can get to those a little bit later in this series of posts. Um, now, most people probably not going to need to work on all seven of these, certainly not all at once. Uh, but even optimizing just a few is going to get you on a path to having really healthy teeth uh, and making that sustainable for you. Um, since we're starting off with enamel structure, just to give you a little bit of history, more than 96% of your enamel actually is composed of mineral. Now, while enamel is the hardest substance in your body, this you know, high mineral content actually makes it very vulnerable to mineral loss through um, you know, them dissolving away. And, you know, while some of you might be a little freaked out right now, don't worry. Uh, your body's, you know, going through these cycles of demineralization and remineralization throughout the day, anytime your pH is moving up or down, when you're having meals, when you're just sitting around in front of the television. And I've drawn up a little chart here to kind of illustrate that. And this kind of, this will show uh, a little bit about what happens when you have a piece of candy and which contains a little bit of sugar. So your, your uh, oral pH will start out about uh, 6.8 to 7, uh, that's typical for the average, average person. And within the first five minutes after eating a little bit of sugar, it's going to drop down rapidly and the length of this drop actually depends on the quality of bacteria in your mouth, which you're going to get to a little bit later uh, in some of our posts. And then it's going to gradually return um, through buffers in your saliva back to your normal pH until you eat again. And what's commonly accepted as the critical pH for dissolution is five and a half. Now, anything below that point of five and a half means that enamel, your enamel's losing minerals. And when your oral pH is above that point, that means that minerals are going back into your teeth. Uh, fortunately, you know, well, actually, let me go to another point. If you know, if you remember from basic uh, chemistry, um, you'll know that not only is the environment going to affect at, you know, at what point this, uh, this pH is going to cause dissolution, the structure of the enamel itself uh, can change what pH your, your uh, minerals are going to start to leave your tooth. Now, there's a wonderful way that we can go ahead and change your enamel to make it stronger and more resistant to pH changes, and that's fluoride. Now, I'm sure you're very surprised to hear Dennis talking about fluoride, and I promise you all our posts are not going to be talking about things as boring as this, but it's a great way to get started. Um, you know, when it's in sufficient concentration, essentially what happens with fluoride is that it will rep replace the hydroxy ions that are in your enamel with fluoride ions and that's going to make your enamel much harder to dissolve. Now, having it in water has been a way that people have typically tried uh, to make sure that everyone's teeth uh, are exposed to fluoride, but it is probably the least effective way at actually getting uh, substantial change in the crystal structure of your enamel, which is why we have things like fluoride mouthwashes and fluoride toothpastes so that you can get the appropriate concentration. In fact, if you had high enough concentrations in your drinking water, that wouldn't be something that you want because fluoride, like any mineral, is not very healthy for you if you consume way too much of it. So, um, 
you know, you don't want to be drinking your mouthwashes or eating your toothpaste either. Um, you're also going to be getting a little bit of fluoride, you know, day to day with your dentist, or, or I guess month to month. Whenever you go to your dentist's office, you're going to be getting some varnish. You're going to be getting some of that foamy fluoride in the tray. But really, at home, using fluoride mouthwashes and toothpastes with regularity is the most important thing for changing the structure of your enamel. Uh, and you can pick a fluoride-containing mouthwash or toothpaste out of any grocery store or Walgreens. Uh, and really, you know. One's not necessarily better than, than another, and we're going to talk a little bit about selecting uh, toothpaste and mouthwashes later um, in some of our posts. But, you know, as long as you go out there and get one, you'll be in great shape. Now, I know for a lot of you, fluoride is probably uh, something, I guess, that's taboo, something that you don't really want to use, and, you know, that's fine. I'm not going to force fluoride down your throat. It's not a big deal. But it's going to make things much, much more difficult for you and you're going to really have to focus on these other six categories and making sure they're really optimized to kind of compensate for the fact that your enamel uh, dissolves a little more easily than most people's. Um, well, that's all for today. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, we'll be back next week. We're going to be uh, heading down this list talking about different things. And uh, I want you guys to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about fluoride in your drinking water. And I also want to give a shout out to George who left uh, our very first comment on mouthmop.com last week. Take care, everybody.